Hello there guys, it's Joey and this is I Can't Wish Without, the series in which each week, hopefully we didn't manage it last week and we just about managed it this week, uh, we take a look at an item which this witch uses within her witchy practice. That's a whole lot of witch and this week we're going to look in a look at holly or tin as we have just passed into the Celtic month of holly or tin by the sort of fairly modern Celtic tree calendar associated with the Owen. So the precursor to this video is that you do not require any or all of the items featured in order to be a witch. That's not what the series is about. The series is about taking a look at different aspects, different elements, herbs, flowers, resins, crystals, etc. that are a part and parcel of a witchy practice. And this tree, plant, shrub is very topical and the energies are very present right now and I really wanted to cover it. And the format of this is that I usually source two books. I usually source simply the Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham and a Compendium of Herbal Magic by Paul Beryl. I also have been gifted the first two copies of The Modern Herbal by Mrs M. Grieve, so we are going to be taking a look at that as well, given that a lot of the information actually overlaps between the Grieve's book and the Herbal Compendium because he actually references her. So it's, it's not too much of a sidestep from the usual layout of source material. And we do this for a number of reasons. One, if you want books, these are two books that provide meanings, correspondences, information that you can go out and purchase and, and read all this information for yourself if you so desire. And if not, you've heard me say it. So I'll read perhaps somewhat in an <laughs> abstract manner where I suddenly veto off and talk about what I feel about it. And that's the second half of the video, talking about my impressions, my feelings, my interconnectivity with the particular energy of whatever it is we're looking at this week being an oem energy, a tree energy. It, it's somewhere between tree and shrub. I mean, technically it's a tree, I think, <laughs> but it, it feels more shrub-like uh, when you actually see it around. But there you go. And we will talk a little bit about it as from an Owen perspective as well. I'm practicing saying Owen rather than Ogum, because <laughs> apparently the, the proper pronunciation is Owen. And we do have Glenny Kindred's book on hand, uh, The Tree Owen, which, by the way, if you're getting into the Owen, this is a really wonderful book pamphlet to get hold of and it's not expensive because it's a pamphlet so highly recommend that if you're getting into Owen which I know a couple of people are and I've been asked a couple of questions so that's a really good book for that for those that were asking about that. So we'll start off with the Cunningham's definitions on Holly because he tends to be a little bit smaller in information yeah it's not too bad for a Cunningham information but it's still uh, not got that much information. Although some of the folk names are fantastic. Some folk names for holly include Aquifolius. It sounds like a water elemental. Bat's wings, Christ thorn, holy tree, homer chaste, hulum, hulverbush, and tin. And tin is obviously the oem. Its gender is masculine, aligned with the planets of Mars and the element of fire, powers of protection, anti-lightning, luck and dream magic. A magical herb par excellence, protective herb. Holly guards against lightning, poison and evil spirits. Planted around the home, it protects its inhabitants from mischievous sorcerers. When thrown at wild animals, Holly makes them lie down quietly and leave you alone, even if you don't hit them with the plant. I can't imagine hitting an, an animal with Holly is going to make them calm down, but sure. Uh, holly water, infused or distilled, is sprinkled around or on newborn babies to protect them, is also carried to... Da, 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 is also carried to promote good luck, especially by men, since it is a male plant, ivy being the corresponding female plant, if you buy into that sort of energy. It's also hung around the house for good luck at Yule. I think Yule is its most obvious time for Holly to come to the fore. 
After midnight on a Friday, without making a sound, gather nine holly leaves, preferably from a non-spiny plant, one that has smooth leaves, good luck with that. Uh, wrap these up in a white cloth using nine knots to tie the ends together. Place this be beneath your pillow and your dreams will come true. And if you uh, pick the spiny plant, then you're going to have all kinds of nightmares because you're going to get jabbed in the eye in the middle of the night by a spiny plant. So don't do that. <laughs> It's just foresee disaster. I don't think I've ever seen a, a, sm a smooth, non-spiky holly. Right, so we're going to have a, a read from A Modern Herbal by Mrs M Greaves. Uh, I was gifted the first of these two and I was over the moon when I was gifted the first two. They're amazing. And there's quite a lot of information here about holly. We're not going to cover all of it because some of it will be from a more botanical perspective and obviously our focus here is on a more magical perspective. So obviously it gives uh, some of the habitat, holly the most important of the English evergreens, forming one of the most striking objects in the winter wonderland with its glossy leaves and cluster of brilliant scarlet berries. It is in the general mind closely connected with the festivities of Christmas, blah blah blah, yuletide, blah 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 blah. The old Christmas carols are full of allusions to holly. Christmas tide comes in like a bride with holly and ivy clad. Some of the history Christmas decorations are said to be derived from a custom observed by the Romans of sending bells accompanied by other gifts to their friends during the festival of Saturnalia, a custom from the a custom the early Christians adopted. In confirmation of this opinion, a subsequent edict of the Church of Baraka has been quoted forbidding Christians to decorate their houses at Christmas with green boughs at the same time as the pagans the Saturnalia festival was commencing about a week before Christmas. The origin has also been traced to the Druids who decorated their huts with evergreens during winter as an abode for the sylvine spirits. In old church calendars we find Christmas Eve marked Templar Ex nor churches are decked, and the custom is deeply rooted in modern times, either as a pagan or early Christian thing. Beginning. An old legend declares the holly first sprang up under the footsteps of Christ. Well, if it's older than Christ, then okay. Yada 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 yada. Uh, Pliny describes the holly under the name of a, of Aquifilius, needle leaf, and adds it to this same tree called by Theophrates Cretaceous, <laughs> but later commentators deny this. Pliny tells us that holly, if planted near the house, repelled poison and defended it from lightning and witchcraft. Oh, well, there you go. And he's the one about the animals. <laughs> so that's where Cunningham's information has come from as well. And then it tells us about what Holly looks like. I think we're probably all reasonably aware of what Holly looks like, so I don't think we need to go into that too much. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of information here about how it looks, uh, including some information. The wood of Holly is hard, compact. It is beautifully white and being susceptible of a high polish, much prized for ornamental wear. Hmm. And people are making uh, w walking sticks out of it, and so on. Right, so yes, that's that's all much more of a practical uh, information. So the, the Herbal Compendium will reference some of that, but it probably takes it to a more magical perspective. So again, listed in the Herbal Compendium as a herb of counter magic, funeral herb, herb of protection, a magical herb, and a religious herb. Holly belongs to a small collection of herbs which have a strong historical law that they have become part of Western heritage, has become bound to the observance of Yule, Christmas, and holidays associated with the winter solstice. In a modern herbal, grief informs us that this dates to the Druids, again, who decorated their huts with evergreens during winter as an abode for the sylvine spirits. We know that it was given as a gift during the Roman festival of Saturnalia. Holly is an important herb in the folklore of the magical 
British Isles. In the Irish alphabet, the holly is T or Tin, the eighth tree. In fact, Grieve describes it as the most important of those evergreens brought into holiday celebrations and folklore. In contemporary neo-pagan customs, holly has been used to decorate the temple at Yule, is kept sacred, is kept sacred until the fires are lit at Candlemas or in Bog, and then it is burnt in the cauldron. Many traditions work with the Holly King, a variant of the Green Man, or male fertility figure. The Holly King, if he can ensure the sharp points of the leaves, is crowned with these hard green leaves. The Farrows and the Eight Sabbaths for Witches provide us with exceptional information. An extraordinary persistent version of the Holly and Oak King theme at the winter solstice is the ritual hunting and killing of the wren, a folklore tradition found as far apart in time and space as ancient Greece and Rome and today's British Isles. The wren, little king of the waning year, is killed by his waxing year counterpart, the robin redbreast, who finds him hiding in an ivy bush or sometimes an island in a holly bush as if it's the holly king. The robin's tree is the birch which follows the winter solstice in the Celtic tree calendar. In the acted out ritual, men hunted and killed the wren with bird, birch rods. Presumably all play acting. The holly is the most important herb in Irish lore. In the White Goddess, Graves cites the romance of Gawain and the Green Knight, in which the Green Knight is an immortal giant whose club is a holly bush. The prominence of holly within religious beliefs dominates many European cultures. It is possible that its name is a variation of holy tree and then they talk then he talks about Miss Greaves' modern herbal bit, which we've already read. Usage Holly is an ideal herb to fashion into a wreath with which to celebrate the welcome of a new priest or priestess into the community. Despite the wonderful illustrations which romanticise the wearing of holly, it is not well suited for human flesh. Oh, finally, somebody with some sense. The thorns of the leaves are extremely sharp, whether the leaves are fresh or withered. Yep, holly can be included in decorative fashion, carefully added to other herbs for a wreath, or placed into vases which are set about the table. Some have even taken holly leaves carefully and use them to decorate a ritual robe and have adopted holly as a design rather than actually using the uh, plant itself. There is much more to holly than its leaves. It can grow into a good sized tree. Okay, so it's technically a tree then. Uh, Hart Graves wrote that the wood was once used for chariot axles by ancient European pagans. It can be cultivated into a straight shaft suitable for a magical staff. The wood of the mature holly is well suited magically for the handle of a ritual knife. I think it would be amazing for that actually, thinking about it, the, the sort of masculine blade energy. Yep. It contains a magic which can both attract and repel. It is powerful when defence is needed and its strength can protect the circle and cherish the gentleness within. The beliefs recorded by Pliny are an indication of the power of the herb while Holly's ability to freeze water or control animals are in the realm of the fantastical. Oh God, I love this. <laughs> I love this author. <laughs> there is a very strong energy about this herb which transcends our tangible reality. Perhaps it is for this reason Holly is associated with death and dying. It is a herb that can be added to the fires of the funeral rituals involving death and dying. Those who move into the mysteries of the crone might press a leaf into their book of shadows. And that's a nice idea, placing a holly leaf into your book of shadows as you move into cronehood as you go on and see it forth. It's always kind of odd to me how the month assigned to holly is uh, July into August. I mean, we haven't even come about to the point where we're having the holly king versus the oak king because um, that's winter solstice and summer solstice. And obviously, at, at winter solstice, the Holly King wins, and at summer solstice, the Oak King wins. I think I'm getting it the right way around. It's uh, n not been a big part of my mythos. Pretty sure I got it the right way around. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what came about as interacting with the priestess and the deva of this tree for me personally. And then we're going to talk about the energies of, of Holly right now. 
So when working with the energies of Holly, Tin and the Owen, uh, I felt that the Holly Priestess resided in spaces along the hedgerows, creating barriers of protection, sharp obstacles to be experienced and overcome, and helping us to connect to the Oum energy of this particular tree. The energy of Holly is not subtle. It screams of the need to understand how to harm and how to heal to best understand the nature of magic. The priestess understands the nature of sacrifice along the path to wisdom and that no warrior is truly tested until they are scarred. The holy priestess speaks, I am the sharp edge, the line of the sword, the dividing hedge which provides the barrier, none may cross without permission, for wildness lies on the other side. And I will grab the Owen book. So, some of the information on the Owen in particular by Glennie Kindred, that information just before was mine, by the way, it's my own work. Uh, from Galeni Kindred, uh, unifying strength, restored balance, restored direction, communication, unconditional love and responsibility. The evergreen is a masculine tree and a powerful symbol of potent life energy. It will help restore direction to your life, uniting past and present actions, as well as past and present lives. It has the ability to unite two sides of a question or problem and can help you find a balanced solution. It will provide you with the raw energy to deal with draining emotional entanglements. Bach wrote, Holly protects us from anything which is not unconditional love. Holly opens the heart and unites us with divine love. The Bach flower remedy Holly is used to help those who are troubled by suspicion, hatred, jealousy and revenge. All of these negative emotions greatly weaken your life force by causing constant inner turmoil and negative thought patterns. Holly can help you to communicate more easily, bringing the inner turmoil out into the open so they can be resolved. Holly brings love and compassion, helping you to understand your pain as well as the pain of others. I think that's something that's very topical right now. It facilitates the power of directed thought, used to psychically connect, sorry, psychically cut the connections of emotional ties which have been formed by draining relationships. Visualize them cut and dissolving away. I don't know if it's the month going into August or if it's, it's the energies of holly, the sharp prickly nature of it, but I always find holly a very difficult month almost every year and I get to the point where I'm like right you mustn't prejudge this month based on the previous experiences of holly you mustn't you mustn't do it um, but and then every year it's difficult uh, and there is this interesting energy and I don't know if I have difficulty connecting to it because it's such a masculine energy and Holly to me reminds me of the grizzled old warrior um, the, the, the sort of grey haired still buff warrior who's been through every war imaginable he's scarred up, he's tattered up, he's been through it all, seen it all, he's not afraid of anything um, and he's kind of the one that kind of welcomes death, you know? That's what the Holly David takes into mind, as far as I'm concerned. And given that there is death energies associated with Holly, I guess it kind of makes sense that he's just this ruthless warrior who's not afraid of anything and is sharp and prickly, a bit like the plant itself. For me, Holly has always been a time and an energy of sacrifice. Um, it talks a little bit about... Um, to me about the sharp edges that prick us making us bleed and understand the magic of blood and sacrifice the hedge witch peering into the wild untamed self in order to better understand her true nature as well as the true nature of what makes a warrior a warrior the, the nature of sacrifice and, and war and um, having bled in order to better understand a situation I mean in this circumstance, bleeding doesn't necessarily mean a physical act of bleeding. You know, it could be the emotional act of bleeding, which leads us back um, to the idea here presented by Glennie Kindred that Holly can help us deal with emotional turmoil. And that emotional turmoil can be past life turmoil, and it can indeed be 
this life present to him, or which ties into the idea of the hedge witch pe peering across the hedge, figuring out um, the wilds beyond comprehension, the wild within the self and the wild without oneself, outside of oneself, the realms of existence. And this is a heavy, heavy, heavy energy in which to really deal with because you have all the key themes in this masculine, fiery, solary energy like roaring up um, and bringing up to the surface all these difficult things and it's it's not a warrior energy in the calm sense most of the time, it's in the conflicting energy. I think Holly has a very conflicting, conflictual nature, a very aggressive nature to it. Um, and whilst it can be used apparently for um, protecting love and, and, and dealing with issues of love, I would personally never in a million years touch love with Holly energy because for me it is so aggressive. Not in a bad way, I just, it just is, you know, it's just, um, if you want it for protection, it's absolutely beautiful for protection, you know, it's going to stab, spear-like, stab anything, um, trying to get into your circle, into your home, into your protected space, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be very highly protected, very, very safe space with Holly around, um, but in matters of the heart, I think you'd be best off saving it for situations which are thorny and difficult, and um, it throws into the idea of sort of um, unrequited love that's caused you great pain, and you might need to deal with that. You might need to bleed out your emotions um, and and just get that out of yourself. Like you need that to bleed out of you, if that makes sense. Pull it out, drain it out, get rid of it, and then if there's uh, tumultuous. Uh, non-beneficial affairs of the heart then uh, Holly would be good for like dealing with that sticky icky situation and you're being put in a situation maybe by others uh, loved one friends whatever that you don't really want to be put into then again Holly can be a, a problem solver but it's not a gentle solution by any means you know I get the feeling that um, Holly is the hammer to problems, you know, it's 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 going to uh, blow things up very much so. Um, it's definitely a blasting energy. Um, it's not mentioned in any of these books whatsoever, but I think it probably lends itself to a negative magic, a hexing magic, uh, quite strongly. Um, if you think about how it's associated with tumultuous uh, emotions are kind of the, the pricking and bleeding out aspects. You can apply that on so many levels to negative magic. So I, I have a feeling that Holly could be a key ingredient to aggressive spell casting and casting of energies to do with war in all forms. The setup in front of you actually is the setup that I decided upon for the Starry Eyed Facebook page to welcome in the uh, month of Holly and Tin. And the images in front of you, as well as Holly in the little bowl and uh, the Oum itself in the centre, are the images that I've felt best uh, sort of really coincided with the energy of Holly. I've included quite a few snake images. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the top one very well because the shine, for some reason, um, it has a rebirth energy there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Death and rebirth there. We have the three of wands, but yeah, f from the Mary L Tarot with the the eye and the red and the the snake energy there, and then we have another. Uh, snake around a key there and I felt that these all associated with Holly in a number of ways I was originally going to make a video discussing snake energy and I have the feeling now that actually it's a very personal part of a process which I'm going through and therefore I'm not going to be making a video discussing it because it's something um, which in terms of symbolism is something that is of importance and is personal to me basically. However I felt that including these energies here of the sort of uh, snake really sort of paralleled how I felt about Holly and it has kind of a warlike energy to it. It has a life force energy 
uh, the three of wands very much represents the Kundalini energy of life force, um, the untempered, the raging life force, the life force that cannot be denied. And around the key and the death and rebirth element of transformation, as well as being feared, I think that uh, snake energy is often misrepresented and feared in a lot of places, even when actually it's it's not something that we should be as phobic of as we are. And I think Holly represents that to a degree as well. It's interesting how we've kind of sanitised Holly through this kind of... Uh, Oh, well, we've associated it with Yule time, so it, it takes the sting out of the leaf, sting out the tail, sting out the bite, you know, and I don't think it does at all for me personally. I think it's still aggressive. I think it's still very um, formidable. I think it's still this grizzled old warrior that could take your head off as soon as look at you. And I think it's human nature to kind of try and sanitise and... and um, make energies gentler. And I don't think holly is one of these energies that we should. It is a warrior energy. It lives through the holly and the oak king because they murder each other once a year and take over each other's throne once a year. And however you want to ritualistically reenact that, there's still a murder and a death and a rebirth energy going on. And some people argue it's two sides of one twin, uh, that, you know, two sides of a personality that come forth uh, twice a year and, and take over and then you have like half and dark half of course energies within I didn't look up what the um, Battle of Trees Holly said I will do that now because I think that would be an interesting interesting tidbit of information I can never remember the, the poem The Battle of Trees my memory's just not that good anymore I'm getting old Excuse me one minute. Oh, holly berries are also poisonous to humans. Uh, even quite a small quantity can make you ill. So holly actually, I did mention this before, um, that when in my interactions with holly um, in terms of the deva, and it's also associated with satin, and satin's one of those um, justice and, and, and death and, and forcing you through trial by combat energies. Uh, so I did mention in my interaction with the Deva of this particular Oem that um, the priestess spoke of the need to be able to harm in order to heal and, and that old um, sort of adage that you need to know how to kill in order to know how to heal and, 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 and medicine and things of that nature. And I think the fact that um, the berries can poison you and the, the wood can be so useful in so many different things uh, that that kind of gives a natural balance a natural pinpointing start off place um, for that idea that you know if you don't know about holly and and you were thinking oh those berries look delicious and red in the middle of winter when you've got nothing to eat and you're uh, for, for sort of um foraging for food and if you didn't know and then they kill you or make you very very sick so you know I think oh come on where on earth is the bit about them I thought this page would have had it on oh is that it uh, the holly Dark green made a resolute stand. He is armed with many spear points, wounding the hand. So there you go. Um, yeah, uh, what was I saying about spears? Dead on. Um, and it does feel like a very spear-like energy. In the uh, OM series I've already done, uh, there is a spear spell for holly or tin that is uh, sort of incorporated around the energy of uh, directing and piercing uh, through another sorceress's malicious magic. And that's one of the uses of holly, of course, is to get rid of what 
other negative spellcasting others are doing against you and break through it and shatter it, shatter their shield or uh, negative magic that they've flung you away, if you like. And it is it is just such an aggressive energy. Um, it's not an energy you cannot work with, but it is an energy that kind of forces you to take stock of all the uh, darker places of yourself, all the emotional turmoil that you may have been going through and have to deal with. And it's very much an energy of you're going to deal with it. It's not an energy of you can hide away, you can um, have a cry and everything will be all right. Holly's not that at all. Holly is get up, you're going to face it, you're gonna, you know, very aggressive. You're going to face it, you're going to overcome it, you're going to deal with it now. And it might be why I have such a tough time every single year when Holly comes into sharp relief uh, in the Celtic Owen month. And then I've got Morrigan-esque energy on the side as well, of course. And then it's all about dealing with that side of things. And it's just like, all in one go, plonk. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, now we, now we have to deal with it, you know. It's not an energy that you should or can avoid, of course. Uh, there are going to be tough times, trials to overcome, obstacles that need to be <clears throat> shattered. Uh, you're going to need to take your spear in hand and, and, and battle on through. And there are going to be times like that for everybody. Um, and it's basically the key to all of this is figuring out uh, what is worth fighting for. And I think that's going to be the last message that I really attach to Holly. Twice a year, the Holly and the Oak King fight every single year for balancing the year. Balance within the self is something that Holly can bring through the dealing of emotional turmoil and, and churning all up to the sort of fist and forcing you to deal with it. And the only way to really fight and be a warrior and get through all these difficult times is to decide in your heart of hearts what is worth fighting for. So that's it for this particular video. Many blessings.